G'day and welcome back. I've been wanting to do a follow-up video for my puzzle box model linked in the description below, paying particular attention to the preparation and post-processing of the core. Let's start with this tolerance gauge, which is straight off the printer. Uh, the 0 0.5 and 0 0.35 spools turn freely and we should be able to free up some more. Um, now I haven't previously attempted to free any more up, so they're all fused solid. So let's see if we can separate the 0.3. So we just uh, insert our tool and we can start turning the 0.3 with uh, fairly low effort. Uh, let's move on to 0.25. Uh, so I'm just inserting my clippers here. And we give it a bit of a turn. And we're able to get 0.25 with a bit of effort. I'm hoping to get down to about 0.2. It um, seems to be sort of the common common limit. Um, people are getting off these tolerance gauges without going too crazy. Oh. We've actually broken that spool. Let's call that a loss. So I was able to get, to get down to 0.25. That demonstrates the main thing I wanted to show is that my printer is not tuned to unreasonable limits. So I can only get down to, on a good day, let's say 0.2. I, I think just looking at it, there is, a, there is a gap there. I think it probably would free up um, if we took a bit more care. Okay, so next we move on to the actual core. And note that each of these gears run all the way through the gearbox as a single piece. Um, the only gears that are separated vertically are the outermost ring gears. They're the only ones that um, turn at a different rate as those centre gears are turned. So I've just put a mark on the outside there to, to indicate how those gears turn. So basically what we want is to free up all the internal gears and separate uh, the ring gears vertically to have a functioning core. Full disclosure, this isn't straight off the printer literally. I have actually taken to the top of this with a bit of sandpaper just to make a bit of clearance and also had a bit of elephant's foot going on on the bottom here. I've just trimmed that off with a... Um, with a razor. Um, otherwise this is how it comes off the printer. So it's, it's fused solid. That's a good thing because these gears will loosen up over time as they're broken in. So we don't want them to start off loose. We want them as tight as we could possibly get them but obviously still be able to separate them. So this is a new addition. So we have a, a secondary locking mechanism. So I've made these two little tools here and these are the same shape as the, the dials on the external halves and basically that will insert into these slots and turn it locks in so the only way to remove it is to return it to the center position and then pull it out so to free up the outer ring gears now remember all those internal gears go all the way through we don't want to delaminate them um, we only just want to um, break the seal um, you can see at certain intervals there's a very distinct break uh, and that's the layer gap, um, which is where we'd like it to separate. I'm going to start with this spatula um, that came with my Ender 3 as a fairly ubiquitous tool that anyone with a 3D printer is likely to have. Um, but my favourite tool for the job uh, is actually one of these, just a uh, small razor blade. Um, these things will happily delaminate any two layers you stick them between uh, with minimal effort. So. Um, careful with that, but very effective. Okay, so we just want to insert that into the gap until we hear that crack. And that crack is the sound of the layers delaminating, which is all we need. We don't need to go deep. Uh, we don't need to go all the way. We just need to get it started. Uh, and as long as we have a, a good crack all the way around, we should be good to go. So that's one layer pretty much done, uh, just all the way around. Um, this is pretty effortless. Um, once you find the right spot, uh, it will just glide right in there. So don't go too deep. You just want to. Just get those outer layers started. 
because as we start turning the gears it will it will free up the rest. Now this particular version has five layers, so two lots of skinny gears on the outer edge, a thick one in the middle that stays together. So now we've separated the outer rings. Um, they're still pretty well attached to the planet gears there. Um, let's just um, see if we can rock this back and forth now. I'm taking extra care not to deform um, this little keyhole. Still applying just a bit more pressure than I'm comfortable with, so I'm just going to take this away and give this a few whacks with a hammer. Okay, so here we are in the garage. All right, now we get a few whacks on the side. Yes, now I can feel a bit of movement with my fingers, so I think I think we're there. Um, let's take it back inside and finish it off. We're all but free. I can actually feel that moving um, under my fingers. I could actually probably turn it with my fingers. And I can. So we didn't even need the side cutters in the end. Otherwise we can still use this tool to just um, rock it back and forth and just finish separating those ring gears which may still have a few pieces holding them together. Um, there we go, so now we're completely freed up. Um, there's no rattling of the gears so we're nice and tight which is good, which is exactly what we want. Um, so the last thing, so we can, I usually um, put these on the drill uh, so you could use a straight screwdriver bit or a nut and bolt to um, grab that and turn it um, and just give it a few minutes just to um, really work it in. Um, it might be worth marking a line on the side like I've done here uh, just so you know when you get back to the home position and the only other step would be to lubricate. So I usually just get a dab of um, petroleum jelly and stick it in either end and just sort of work that in by turning the gears. Alright, thanks for coming.